What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. I'm your host Mike and today I'm going to bring you my week 17 favorite ads, holds, or drop players. Now obviously the hot topic of conversation this week is what's going on with the Vegas Golden Knights and Mark Stone. So make sure you stay tuned for that in the mid part of this video. If you enjoy the content, make sure you leave a like, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and before we jump into this video, make sure you take a second to listen to our video sponsor. Introducing the new sponsor to our channel, we're talking about a brand new daily fantasy props app, Thrive Fantasy. Use code FP100 and receive a 100% deposit match up to $100 and two free $20 contest tickets. That's code FP100, receive a 100% deposit match and two free contests. The first must-have player for this week and transitioning over to next week is Mikhail Backlund of the Calgary Flames. Now, I've recommended him a few times this season and I'm going to continue to recommend him until his ownership starts to rise. He had a slow start to the season, that's why his stats are not as appealing as they should be. Just 9 points in his first 29 games, including 50 shots. But since then, in his last 16 games, Backlund has recorded 12 points, a plus 8 rating, and 58 shots. This is way more indicative of Backlund's upside, and now with Toffoli getting traded to the Flames, it adds another big goal scorer to his line that already features Andrew Mangiapane. Personally, I don't think the Flames are done making moves and they're likely to load up for a strong second half. Backlund's ownership on Yahoo is just 19%, meaning he's likely available in 12-14 to 14 team leagues. If you need a scoring center with solid shot upside, now is the time to add Backlund. The next player to add and stash in your team is Jacob Vrana of the Detroit Red Wings. Offseason surgery has knocked Vrana out for the entire season so far, but based on reports, he was on the same timetable to return as Stetcher. For my Wings fans, you already know that Stetcher is back in the lineup and is fully healthy. It seems that Vrana should be back in the lineup fairly soon, meaning one of the top offensive players on the Red Wings should be available to add on your waiver wire. The struggling Zadina is currently skating on the top line, and I would assume Vrana is likely going to take over his spot and spend a lot of time on the team's top power play unit. Now it is important to note that Detroit's obviously not a very good team right now, and in leagues with plus minus, Vrana might actually hurt you. But the point in shot upside will be there, Larkin has been dominant all season, and adding Vrana to a line will only make things better for the Wings. I love Vrana's long-term outlook this season, and you should look to stash him as soon as you can. The final must-have player for this week and for next week is Brett Pesci of the Carolina Hurricanes. I loved Pesci in preseason, and with Carolina steamrolling teams right now, it seems like a very good time to add one of their best defensemen. Pesci is a solid all-around player and will hit almost every category for you. He's playing over 21 minutes per night this season, and recently has seen games over 23 minutes, which is really encouraging. The Canes have a solid three-game schedule next week as well, facing off against the Flyers, Jackets, and the Oilers, all of which rank in the bottom 10 for defensive categories. This should be a smash spot for the Hurricanes, and we can expect Pesci to put up some solid points and add some shot volume. He's definitely more of a deep league player, and the lack of power play time does concern me, but he does seem to carry the workload 5-on-5. Five five. It's hard to ignore the super favorable matchup upcoming and Pesci's recent play. I'm sure many of you saw the news about Mark Stone, but if you didn't, Vegas is putting him on the long-term injury reserve to free up cap space, so Vegas can now activate Eichel. Now, my take on this is that if Vegas can't free up cap space at the deadline, Stone will likely remain on the long-term injury reserve for the remainder of the season, similar to what Tampa did with Kucherov. But let's be real, this is their captain and arguably their best player. Vegas wants Stone in their lineup, and they will do anything they can to move some of their higher-priced players to free up cap space for him. With this in mind, I can't really justify dropping or moving Stone in fantasy given when he's healthy, he's a top 10 winger in some leagues. I don't own Stone anywhere, but if I did, I would simply just place him on your IR or NA spot and hold him for as long as possible. I just can't justify dropping a player of his caliber with fantasy playoffs approaching. It's a really tough call, I get it, and honestly, I would love to hear what all of you have to say in the comment section below. The next player to hold is Jesse Pugliarvi of the Edmonton Oilers. With the addition of Evander Kane and the new coach, we really didn't know how Pugliarvi would sit in the lineup. He did spend most of January on the third line where his value basically went to zero. Luckily, we can now see that Edmonton's new coach does have trust in Pugliarvi, and in the early going, he has him skating on the top line with McDavid and Hyman and is the net front presence on the team's lethal top power play unit. This is where we liked him going into the season and really what made him one of our favorite sleepers. Obviously, shifting throughout the lineups out of our control, 
But now that he's back with McDavid, Bliarvi's value is going to skyrocket for the rest of the season. He's likely on watch to be moved back down in the lineup, but for the time being, you should continue to hold him. I do think Edmonton has a lot to prove, and Pugliarv is going to need to step it up for his team to get going. Okay guys, so now jumping over to the drop section, the first player I would look to drop is Carter Hart of the Philadelphia Flyers. Yup, roast me, I deserve it. I truly thought this would be the year for Hart and the Flyers, but again, the injury bug knocked out their two best defensive players in Ryan Ellis and Sean Couturier, and of course, Hart has really had no help. At this point, I'm just making up excuses to cover myself, but Hart honestly hasn't been that bad. For a goalie who literally has zero help in front of him, a 289 goals against average and a 911 save percentage really isn't awful. We do have to keep in mind now that Philly will likely be a pretty heavy seller at the deadline, especially with rumors that they want to move Giroux. This is similar to the case with Chikrin, an elite player that has regressed significantly due to the team in front of him being basically a salary dump. Hart is kind of in the same position. If Philly begins to trade away their top talent, we can expect Hart's performance to regress significantly. Now he does get quite a bit of volume with 31 starts this season, but I just can't find enough reasons to hold them. Thank you for watching our week 17 must add drop and hold players video. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like and if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Thank you for watching. I look forward to seeing you all in the next one.